For Space Station crew members, the football-sized orbiting laboratory is their home away from home for six months or even, in e even a year. It's where they live and work, and therefore their spacecraft must be comfortable and efficient. That's where the Human Factors Group at Johnson Space Center comes in. Lori Meggs, my colleague at NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center in Alabama, spoke with a Human Factors engineer about the habitability investigation, which is collecting observations about the relationship between crew members and their environment, and whether emissions cura uh, duration impacts how much space crew members need. We're trying to uh, assess the habitability of the International Space Station, so how people interact with their environment when they're living and working. Um, we want to get information about how they're interacting with Space Station now so that we can feed it forward into um, the design of future space vehicles. We're looking at longer duration flights in the future, so um, it's more important to make sure that we get all of the little details right. So we're, we're asking people to use um, things like an iPad application and videos to document the way they're interacting with their environment, starting with the one-year ISS mission. This is something we really don't think about, though. The, the, the surroundings, I mean, that's their home for mm -hmm. six months and now a year. So astronauts come back and say, you know, this was bad, this was good, this is... Is that how it kind of works? We've looked at um, what feedback we do have from astronauts so far. There are sources like um, the post-mission debriefs. Um, the people who do those debriefs are co-investigators on the study. And so they've helped us go through it and see that, yes, they do comment on things like um, their the hardware that they interact with, the software they interact with, um, things that, that could be um, designs better, um, things that human factors engineers care about. Um, so they comment about those types of things in the debriefs. Um, we also look at, there's um, notes that crew members make in their scheduling tool when they're on ISS. They can go in and make notes about a specific task as they go. So we go through and look at those notes and, and we feel like there's, um, the, the astronauts probably have a lot to say about these things, um, but we may not be capturing it as optimally as we could. Um, we also tested this out during NEMO, which is an underwater analog. Um, we sent our iPad app with them and we had them use it during a 14-day mission. Um, we got some great feedback to give to the NEMO analog facilities people. Um, we got great feedback about the app and some lessons learned about how to, to improve it for Space Station. Uh, and we did the same thing with Hera, which is um, a ground-based analog. It's a building that sits on site at, at Johnson Space Center. And um, we had people use that for a seven-day mission. They, they used the application. They took videos just the way that we are asking the astronauts to take videos during the space flight study. Um, another component of the study to capture the same type of information is we're going to have a, a live conference with astronauts that'll be questions that are just the same type of things they always ask during post-mission debriefs. But the hope is that if we ask it closer to real time, we might get um, a little bit of recall on issues they may have encountered. And, and it's not just negative issues either. It's positive things. Like we like the way you did this, let's make sure we do that in the future. Let's talk a little bit about the iPad app. How does that work? So um, the app is called the Space Habitability Observation Reporting Tool, um, iShort. It's a, an application that allows users to provide responses using text, photo, video, audio recordings, basically trying to provide them lots of options with any way they want to tell us about something they, they can tell us. What do we hope to learn from this? Are there Earth applications too? Um, one of the big things that we're trying to look at is um, called net habitable volume. So it's how much space do you need in the entire vehicle to get the tasks accomplished that you need to accomplish. So we'll be looking at things like um, how frequently do they use this area, um, if we can capture video of postures of them performing a medical sim task, for instance. And um, some people that are very interested in that kind of thing too would be um, oil and gas industry. They design platforms that are very cramped spaces that people have to stay in for a pretty long amount of time. Um, the Navy, um, submarines, um, there, there are several Earth industries that are interested in the same type of thing, and we've, we've worked with them to, to come up with what we think the important tasks are that are going to drive you to have a bigger volume. But basically, in, for NASA and for some of the Earth applications like oil and gas, um, the volume that you provide means it costs money to provide it. So everybody wants to, to get by with as small of a volume as you can, but as human factors people, uh, our concern is that we want to make sure that people can still successfully accomplish all of their tasks.